All right, we are going to weigh up the pros and cons of the Hobie Outback and the Hobie Pro Angler. I'm gonna talk about which one that I would buy and the pros and cons of both because it is not a clear cut decision. Let's get into it. All right, let's get into this. Now, I think there's two big questions in the Hobie kayak space. The first one is Hobie Compass versus Hobie Outback. And the second one, which is the one we're gonna talk about today, will be the Hobie Outback versus the Hobie Pro Angler. Now, we're gonna break down those two kayaks and we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of each. Hopefully you walk away from this video, <clears throat> excuse me, you walk away with a better idea about the capabilities and design features of the kayak. When it comes to the Outback versus the PA14 argument, I probably should contextualize this. I have owned two Hobie Outbacks and I have used four different models of uh, four different years, if you like. In terms of pro anglers, I've owned five in total. So I've owned a PA12, a PA14 that went forward only, the first year that they came out with the MD-180, I owned that one as well. And I've also owned two 360s. Those 360s are an absolute blast, but we're gonna put the 360 pace to the side. We're really gonna concentrate on that MD-180 aspect today. Now I mentioned before, we're not gonna talk about the PA-12, and that is because the 12 and the Outback are both 12 foot long. And in my opinion, the PA-12 is not in this equation at all. I don't like it personally. It just does not uh, feel like a nice kayak to me. And honestly, it is actually the least favorite uh, Hobie kayak in the entire Hobie kayak range of mine. I would prefer a Passport over a Hobie 12. Now, don't let that change your opinion. If you're a PA-12 lover, continue to be a PA-12 lover. That's okay, we're allowed to have different opinions. So anyway, let's get into the features and break this review apart. Now, so broadly speaking, both of these kayaks are very popular kayaks, particularly with kayak fishermen. Now, as the name Pro Angler would suggest, it is specifically designed for anglers. The Hobie Outback is still 100% designed for anglers, but it does appeal to a larger market due to its size and transportation considerations that we'll talk about a little later. Now, for a number of years, Hobie have actually claimed that the Outback is the most popular kayak on the market, and I'm not 100% sure whether that is still the case in 2021. I have been told, and it is secondhand info, so I'm not sure if it's 100% True, but the Old Town PDL 120, uh, let me think, uh, the top water one there, uh, that technically sold more units in the US last year. That combined with all those $400 L Cheapo kayaks that are coming out of China probably have the units over everything else as well. But nonetheless, what I'm getting at is the Hobie Outback is one of the most popular kayaks on the market and there's a good reason for it. It's much more than just one piece of plastic on a pedal drive. Now we're gonna run front to back on both of these kayaks really quickly, but the PA14 has a front hatch that's about double the size of the Outback. For me, that's never really been a big issue. My front hatches are typically half empty with either a backpack or a cooler bag that's in the front here. But most of the time, like I mentioned, they are half empty. There's plenty of room up the front in the hatches on both of these to store what you want. Down the side of the PA14, you do have almost a full length H-rail that runs probably about 70% of the kayak. It is a really handy piece of kit to have on a kayak, particularly if you're into mounting gear like sounders, graphs, rod holders, hydro waves, whatever you need. When you look at the Outback, the awesome thing about it is that it actually has these rails, but only in what you would call the areas that actually matter. Ergonomically, when you're in the kayak, this area sits around about arm's length and I reckon about 90% of anglers are gonna mount their, most of their gear in that spot anyway. There is a slight difference on the H-Rail. On the PA14, it is a plain H-Rail, but on the Outback, it is a H-Rail that has a ram mount track integrated into it. There is some sort of specific copyright behind what they've done there, but not only is that track on the H-Rail, it's actually replicated on the outside section of this little mounting area. That combined with that rubber pocket and the drinking holder just adjacent to it, both on the left and the right side, I've got to say, really make this Hobie Outback spectacular. It is a great little cockpit setup to sit in and use. Back to the Hobie PA, its cockpit is also really convenient, but in a different way. It is just a large area that you can process fish in, and it's almost like a, a mini deck where you can realistically, you know, drop your items through the day, whether that's pliers or scissors, and not really have the immediate issue where they're going to fall into the water. You can deal with that stuff later and pick up that stuff 
as you need it. The big difference in the cockpit area with the Outback and the Pro Angler is actually your seating height. Up on the PA, you are sitting up and out. You can see a lot more. And the big difference there for us kayak fishermen is that extra seat height you get does give you the ability to look down and look further. You can see some structure and sight cast fish just a little bit better from a Pro Angler than you can a Outback. In both models, I've found the seats just as comfortable as each other and I'm quite happy to sit in both for 12 hour days without a problem. At the back of the kayaks, both kayaks do take the Hobie live wall, but only the PA takes the XL version of the live wall. And to be honest, the small one is generally becoming my preference. Over the years, I started with the small one, went to the XL. Now I'm going back to the small one because I don't like the idea of carrying around an extra 44 pound or an extra 20 liters or kilograms worth of water that I don't need to. Back to the graphics, the last main feature is the power pole. Now, if you want to mount one on the PA, you're going to need to purchase a mount that looks a little bit like this, and that's how the power pole motor is going to fit onto the kayak. On the Outback, however, there is a direct mounting system, meaning you can drill the power pole motor directly onto the kayak. To take a quick side note, if you are a kayak fisherman, I think the option of a power pole is almost a deal breaker for the Pro Angler. Obviously, it depends on your budget and the things aren't cheap. Once you consider the mount, your batteries that you're going to put on it, whether it's a lithium one or a FBB battery, whatever you're looking at, it could be 17 to 1800 Australian dollars. When you consider your budget and you consider that a pro angle costs this amount and an Outback Plus pole costs this amount, that actually becomes quite a viable option. If it was me, I would take the Outback and pole over a vanilla pro angler every day of the week. Yes, I know that that is around about $1,000 still more expensive than that, but you get my point. Now obviously prices are subject to change, but the Hobie Pro Angler is just short of $6,000 at the moment and the Outback is just over $5,200. I think when you talk about the price, you've got to remember that the craftsmanship of these Hobies is not like your cheap Chinese kayak that does come out of China. These things will be running in 10 years time if you use them every weekend. They are the Ferrari of kayaks where you will buy this kayak and that will be it. You don't have to cycle them every year like some idiot does, but you get the idea. You buy this one thing and it will serve your purpose. Both models of these kayaks do come in a camo version that I reckon is a bit of a cash grab because they do charge a couple of hundred dollars extra for basically nothing. Once upon a time, they did have different fins and I thought then that extra cost was valuable, but that is no longer the case. If you like a camo color, you're gonna pay an extra couple hundred dollars for the camo color. Yes, I know there is a couple of other small changes like the pads that are on the EVA decking and whatnot, but none worth the $200 changes that they're charging. So back to the price, the biggest separation between the Hobie Pro Angler 14 and the Outback is not actually the initial $800 price tag that separates both the kayaks. Due to its size and weight, it's generally accepted that the best way to transport a Hobie PA 14 is by using a trailer to tow the kayak behind you. That means purchasing the trailer if you don't already have one, the associated insurance, the registration, and the extra fuel consumption and on mileage with traveling with the kayak. If you choose not to go down the trailer path, then you might be stuck with some sort of loading system to put the kayak on top of your medium to large size vehicle, like a ute, a pickup, or some sort of four wheel drive truck. The Hobie Outback, however, does not need that. You can certainly choose to tow the kayak around, but de-rigged, when I owned the Outback, I just picked it up and car topped the Outback on the roof of my old Subaru Impreza. The Outback still does weigh 38 and a half kilo or 85 pound, I think the number is. So you might still need a loading system to get it onto the top of your kayak, but over the long term, the Outback and that cost equation is definitely leaning in the Outback's favor, particularly over the long term when you consider mileage and the years of trailer towing that you might actually end up doing. On the water, the kayaks do handle differently and they both outperform each other in different areas. In terms of speed, the Hobie Outback wins, but not by a huge amount. You do just push along less weight and I reckon that's got to do with it. In terms of stability, however, that goes to the Pro Angler 14 and that's pretty obvious, but I'll show you some photos here and you can see in calm conditions, I am standing on that front hatch. 
I stand in front of the Mirage Drive if I want to. And that cockpit area that is quite large, I feel comfortable standing up and moving around in that completely. Personally, it would be my preferred fly fishing platform if I was going to fly fish. Now, that's not to say that the Outback is stable. 100% it is still stable, and you can stand up in that cockpit area, but in a seated position, the Pro Angler versus the Outback, I reckon they are as good as each other. So both these kayaks handle the bad weather in the chop just fine, and simply because you're a little bit lower and closer to the front in the Outback, you're going to get just a little bit more wet no big deal. In terms of maneuverability, the Hobie Outback wins by a long way. The rudder and the steering handle are really responsive in the Outback, particularly at slow speeds. The PA on the other hand does take a long time to turn. Now, it will cut through a nice turning circle when you've got some current or you've got some speed, but at slow speed, it can be a giant battleship to move. Overall on the water, the PA-14 is like a Humvee. It is big and stable. It moves around, takes a little bit to move around, and it has a presence. On the other hand, the Outback is like a sporty BMW. It's fast, it's agile, it's maneuverable, but it's definitely still safe. So before I wrap this up, there are some final fisherman's points here that you should consider. The first one is rod storage, vertically behind you or horizontally down the side. Not one part of me likes the idea of having my spare rods stacked vertically behind me in my live well, behind my head. And that's the option that we have with the Outback. It eliminates the option for the overhead long distance cast. And if you forget about that for one split second, you can take the rod tips off all of your rods with one swoop. I have definitely done this before, and this cast cost me $550 and my favorite and rod. And just looked at it, it's sat there. Oh, yeah. What have I got? On the other hand, if we consider the PA-14, it has six horizontal rod storage spaces down the side. That means that they are out of the way and they're laying down in tubes, so the probability of a broken rod tip is much less. The second fisherman point is your net and where you keep it. There's plenty of space up front on the outback to hold the net, but generally the net handle is going to sit between the Mirage Drive pegs, and it does sit there really nicely. Initially, it does look awkward, but it fits nicely. On the PA, I do replace this socket here with a magnet, and that magnetizes the net down to the front hatch whenever I'm not using it, and that really helps manage the net nicely. So finally, all things considered, we have two dream kayaks to choose from. Tell me what you think in the comments below, but here are my thoughts. It is my opinion that if you are intending to maximize your time on the water with the best possible kayak and transport, as well as a trailer and lugging a bit of weight around between the boat ramp and the water is not a problem, well then, the PA-14 is a good option for you. If you're a features type of guy and the idea of paying for increased fuel costs, trailers, Red Joe, all that sort of gear doesn't appeal to you, well then the Hobie Outback is going to be the kayak that you're looking for. I'd also consider the kayak if you just simply did not want to lug around 55 to 80 to 90 kilos worth of kayak and gear around the boat ramp and get that to your car. That can be a bit of a hassle and the Outback makes that a lot easier. Remember to support the channel, smash that subscribe button, hit that like button down there. And next week we are going to New Zealand, back to the offshore fishing with Hobie Outbacks and big fish. Hope you enjoyed the video, stay safe. I'll see you next time. Oh, yep, hits. Yep. On. On, 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 on. All right, we're on racks here. I can feel it. We've gone over. So let's cast the deck. Here we go. This is under the rack. How's that? First cast. Good legal fish. Under the rack. Under the rack. No, no, no. Get away from that pole, mate. There we go. Oh, yeah. Far out. That's a great way to start. Good bag filler. Oh, my God. That's a great way to start. Oh.